Okay, so Alexandria is independent and permissionless publishing, distribution, and sales of digital content. You can think of it like Spotify or YouTube, but without servers, ads, or censorship. So I'm going to take a wild guess and say that this is most of you, but show of hands, who remembers the internet, the walled garden internet? Logging into AOL, Prodigy, CompuServe, right? Everybody? It was the introduction of a standardized protocol and the popularity of it and the web browsers that were built upon it that broke those walled gardens open and forever changed the publishing industry. Today, content distribution platforms are ripe for similar disruption. Digital distribution is a huge market. It's currently more than $600 billion and is projected to grow to almost a trillion dollars by 2018, but is it, it is an industry in crisis. Artists are unhappy. Audiences can't access the content they want, and the whole industry is struggling from the inexpensive and inefficient structure. Our project was named, of course, as an homage to the Ancient Library of Alexandria because it's the perfect example of the problem with central points of failure. Today's content distribution architecture is similarly vulnerable. The decentralized library of Alexandria solves these problems. By using blockchain technology, the contents of the library are protected from censorship, alteration, and destruction, and the rights of the artists are respected. So let's check out a demo. Publishing to the library is as easy as uploading to YouTube. So while you're just watching us fill out some fields here, I'll talk a little bit more about how it's built. The heart of Alexandria is an open source protocol that uses Bitcoin for payments, a blockchain to store and protect the content index, and a peer-to-peer -peer network to distribute the content. And we're also building its first application, much like HTTP needed Mosaic or Netscape, we're building the Alexandria browser, but anyone can use the protocol to build their own front end. So we're going to preview it first. It's going into the blockchain. It'll be there forever. We don't want to put the wrong piece of media up, right? This is a movie Devin worked on when he was in Hollywood, actually. And so we're about to see just really quick what it's actually going to do. It adds the files to IPFS, which we've all been talking about. It takes all the information that was in, uh, input as uh, index information and then adds that to a blockchain. So it's going into a blockchain right at that moment. Okay, so now we're going to view some content in the library. By using a peer-to-peer -peer file sharing network, the library is extremely fast and efficient. It can easily handle 4K video and lossless FLAC audio. We're looking at some free content here, so we didn't hit a paywall before we saw this, but we'll look at some paid content next. But before we do, I want to point out the embed code at the bottom there. This lets you put your content anywhere, right? But what's special about it is that it takes all of the content creator's preferences and payment fees with it wherever it goes. So let's look at some paid content now. Um, we've been working with Rockstar and blockchain enthusiast Emojin Heap. She let us put her newest song up and asked us to charge a penny per stream. So the paywall pops up, we pay a penny in Bitcoin and it will immediately start playing. Micropayments are a revolution for content creators because there is a huge unserved market of content creators whose content is worth less than the 70 cents that iTunes will pay them, but more than the hundredth of a cent that YouTube will pay them. By using Bitcoin, content creators can customize their pricing to fit their market. So what really sets our team apart is that before we started doing this project, we worked in Hollywood. So we understand these problems deeply and personally. And frankly, we started this project because we wanted it to exist for ourselves. But we aren't the only ones that want it. The industry needs it. And a quick look at the numbers makes it crystal clear why. At the price Emojin Heap set of one penny per play, content creators will earn seven to eight times what they're currently making on Spotify or iTunes. And audiences will pay 50% less. A great experiment was done by one of our comrades in this space. They're a front end for micropayments for video. And they worked with a content creator who has 600,000 followers on YouTube. He put the same video on YouTube and a pop chest. And with less than 2% of the views he got on YouTube, he earned four times as much through pop chest. By using decentralized technology, Alexandria is a generational leap forward. It's better, it's faster, and it's cheaper. We invite you to go to alexandria.io and start publishing today. Thank you.
So this doesn't sound like a library to me because usually in libraries you go in, you check something out, you take it away without paying. So that it's, it seems more like Amazon to me, but in a decentralized, more... Well, we, we, we went with library main, mainly because of Alexandria, because we wanted to kind of represent the concept of a single place that can store as much as possible and have ever-growing walls and last for as long as possible. And it can absolutely be used for a specific use case for libraries, for checkout. Um, but the, the name library, you're right, it's not perfect for the, for the, for the platform itself. So do you have actual librarians working for you, applying metadata and organizing things so not people yet, can find it? Not yet, but that's definitely part of the plan. Um, so first of all, uh, congratulations, that was very cool. And, and the, the pop chest uh, uh, example that you gave, uh, <laughs> it's cool as one of the handful of projects here is actually thinking about the economics of it. I have one question. Uh, so uh, right now, most people don't have like Bitcoin or something like that. And getting it is a bit of a pain. You have to make, say, a Coinbase account or something. Uh, how are you going to get uh, the audience of, of uh, musicians, like audiences, to get, to get Bitcoin? Content has driven more techno more pe people toward more new technologies than anything else. So we think that that's going to be a big part of it. When you can only find your content by buying some Bitcoin and then needing to spend the penny, people are going to be more likely to do it, I think. And there's obviously services that we can use to make that easier, right? They're they're just starting to introduce those now. And then there's going to be sort of these way showers that we've seen, Tom York, Emojin Heap, Amanda Palmer, who are going to kind of be the, the trailblazers and, you know, take this on because they have these followings that are sort of um, so devoted that they will make that leap to follow the creator that they love. And we've also seen a lot that millennials especially really uh, connect with the, the content creator that they like. And so they like that they can create a direct relationship with them. That's why they've gotten so heavy on Patreon and platforms like that, where they feel like they can directly contribute to what they're enjoying continuing. And so that really helps when you can make that connection for Right, them. and sort of the unspoken thing of all of this is ads are what's kind of monetizing all of this right now. and that that, that business model is rapidly failing. Um, and so we're going to need a solution to that, and we believe this is it. Yeah, that makes sense. Thanks. Thank you. So uh, decentralization is what makes all of this possible, but for most people, that word um, you know, might make their eyes glaze over for like you know, the average person. You know, what's in it for me with this decentralization? I really don't care. Um, but I really liked what you said there on one slide. I think if there is any one slide in your presentation that's worth really uh, highlighting. Uh, it's the one where you said, and correct me if I have this uh, mistaken, but it's with Alexandria, users pay 50% less and artists receive seven to eight times more than on iTunes, was it? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm, I'm gonna tweet that iTunes now. or Spotify, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I agree, this is thrill. Uh, I talked to you in the pew for all the time thinking this is a library, it's not a library, you've really got to rebrand it. You can rebrand it as a layer over that uses library of Alexandria technology, and, uh, but it's really, it is really interesting. You need, you know, you're competing with things like Bandcamp, and so that, yeah, that is the most, I agree, that's the most important slide. You need to find an icon and a name, which, because I, you know, I have been in talks asking people, saying we need to get, uh, find a way of getting money to, create, uh, to artists, and you know, directly. Yeah. Without, with, without the fees, this seems to be uh, a really good contender for the way to do it, uh, but it, uh, you need to figure out the branding about how, how to present it. Agreed, agreed. No, we think it's things like these, this kind of statistic, like literally an artist goes for a month of doing this and gets to tell the rest of their artist friends, look at how much better this worked per play than it did on iTunes and Spotify, et cetera. That's gonna be a big part of the driver for others to do the same, go ahead. So what keeps you from we Since we're going into the next panel now, okay. well, but I would like up, to thank our, our wonderful question? speakers. Please find them in the break room. Thank okay. you guys for, for showcasing the bleeding edge of decentralization.